Welcome to the Chop Man tutorial series. In this video, we'll show you how to create the tying fruit spawn and bonus pickup. With our bonus fruits state machine now complete, let's now move on to creating the spawning system for our bonus fruit. To begin, let's go to our stage manager state machine and let's go under our level one super state and into our start game state. Before we begin discussing the logic that we need to create for our fruit bonus spawning system, we need to first discuss the conditions that need to be met for the fruit to spawn. Another way a player can increase their score is by eating the bonus fruit. Bonus fruit appears twice per level directly below the ghost holding pen. The first bonus fruit appears after one quarter of the dots are eaten and the second appears after over half of the dots are eaten. Each fruit is worth 100 to 5,000 points, depending on which level the player is currently on. With that in mind, the system we'll need to create will need to determine when to spawn our fruit based on the amount of dots in the level and the amount of dots that the player has consumed. Additionally, we'll need a timing element in order to remove our bonus fruit if it isn't consumed in time. In order to better optimize our scene, rather than creating another update event, let's simply use our update event from our set score text. So let's disconnect our text node from the level complete check branch node, and let's use a custom event in order to initiate the level complete check. We'll also create another custom event trigger, and that will initiate our fruit spawn check. So we'll begin by creating the custom event receiver and we want that then to go to a branch node. Since we may not want our fruit to spawn for each level, let's create a scene boolean variable which we'll call enable fruit spawn. And since we don't want to run into the event that both fruits spawn simultaneously for any reason, let's also create a object variable boolean and we're going to call that has fruit spawn. So we want our custom event to first check and see if our fruit has spawned and if that's false, we want it to then initiate spawning our fruit. And since we'll be using much the same logic for our second fruit, let's move our is fruit enable check to our set score text group. Next, let's create another branch node, and we're going to use this branch node to initiate our spawn. So from this branch node, we want it to compare the amount of dots the players consumed with the original amount of dots that were on screen. And since we don't have a variable to keep track of the original amount of dots, let's create an object variable that we'll set at the beginning of the state to store the original amount of dots. So from there, we want to say, does the current amount of dots equal to a quarter of the original amount of dots? So we're going to use a divide node.
And instead of simply plugging our divide node into our equal, we want to use a math round node. In this way, we'll always get a round number opposed to a number with a decimal point. From there, we want to instantiate our game object. And since we want the fruit to spawn in a particular place, we need to use a game object instantiate on parent node. So let's create a object transform variable, which we're going to call fruit spawn point. And we want to plug that into the parent of our game object instantiate node. And let's now create four application variables, one for each prefab of our bonus fruit. And let's place those prefabs as our variable value. Let's also create a 3D game object cube and we want to set that as our fruit spawn point. So let's place that in the point we want our fruit to spawn in our scene. And we'll also turn off the mesh render as well as the mesh collider. And let's place that in the fruit spawn point transform variable. Next, let's create a object float variable, and we're gonna use this to control the amount of time that the fruit is on screen. So we'll call that fruit lifetime. At this point, let's create a wait for seconds node and plug our fruit lifetime variable into its duration. Let's also be sure to check coroutine on our fruit spawning custom event node. And from this point, we want to do a null check to see if the player has eaten the fruit or if the fruit is still on screen. If the player hasn't eaten the fruit, we want it to then destroy that game object and set our has fruit 01 spawn to true. If they have eaten the fruit, however, we want to simply bypass our game object destroy and set our has fruit 01 spawn to true. So before we test our bonus fruit spawning mechanic, let's first set our original dot amount variable. With that complete, let's enable our scene fruit spawning variable and test our fruit spawning mechanic so far.
we can see at the start that it's already set our original dot amount and if we zoom in we can see that the dot amount that it needs to get to before it spawns our fruit is 113. And we could see that that our fruit is spawned on screen. And if we don't get to it in our designated time, which was eight seconds, that our fruit disappears from screen. And our has fruit one spawn equals to true. So at this point, we have our fruit spawning. However, if we go, if we look under our fruit spawn point, we can see that we have multiple cherries that spawn at once. And the reason for this is our game objects continue to spawn as long as the current dot amount was equal to the number set in our graph. So in order to alleviate this, let's move our has fruit spawn from the end. And we'll move that to right after our fruit initially spawns. We can now see if we look under our fruit spawn point that we only have one spawn fruit. So with our first spawn fruit now working correctly, let's duplicate our nodes and use them to create the second spawn fruit. For our second fruit, in order to ensure that the fruits don't spawn at the same time, we'll need to check if both our first and second fruit have spawned. And for the division amount, we'll use 2.5 since traditionally the second fruit spawns after over half of the dots are eaten. We'll also change our spawning fruit prefab. With all our bonus fruit spawning mechanics working correctly, we can now simply copy all our nodes and paste them in the start game of our additional levels. We can also adjust the fruit that spawns to be more valuable each level the player advances.
We'll also need to remember to copy and set our custom events in the graphs of our other levels. Lastly, we need to go into our level picker and we'll use an on enter state to reset our hashfruit01 and hashfruit02 boolean variable back to false so they can spawn in each subsequent level. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.